Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe induced dipole-dipole interactions. In the last video we started looking at intermolecular forces. Remember that intermolecular forces act between molecules. Intermolecular forces are weaker than covalent bonds and are easily broken, for example by high temperature. There are three types of intermolecular forces. These are called induced dipole-dipole interactions, permanent dipole-dipole interactions and hydrogen bonds. We're going to start by looking at induced dipole-dipole interactions. Now these types of forces have got several other names. They can also be called London forces or dispersion forces. And if you're following the AQA spec, then they're referred to as van der Waals forces. I'll be referring to them as London forces as it's easier to say. I'm showing here three atoms of neon, but I should point out that this applies to any atom or molecule. I'm representing the electrons as negative signs. Now electrons are randomly moving from place to place, and there's no reason at all why the electrons should be evenly spread out, like I'm showing you here. If we look at atom 1, imagine for a fraction of a second that more electrons are on the right-hand side of the atom. For this fraction of a second, atom 1 now has a dipole. The left side of atom 1 has a slight positive charge, and the right side of atom 1 has a slight negative charge. Now you need to understand that this is not a permanent dipole. It has just formed instantaneously due to random electron movement. Scientists call this an instantaneous dipole because it happens in that particular instant. Now because the right side of atom 1 has a slight negative charge, this repels the electrons in atom 2. This causes the electrons in atom 2 to move towards the right side of atom 2. And this means that atom 2 now has a dipole. This is called an induced dipole. And the word induced means caused by something else. So the dipole on atom 2 did not happen randomly. It was caused by the dipole on atom 1. Now the negative charge on the right side of atom 2 repels the electrons in atom 3. This causes the electrons in atom 3 to move to the right side of atom 3. And atom 3 now has a dipole. Again, this is an induced dipole because it was caused by the dipole on atom 2. All of these dipoles now experience a force of attraction, and this attraction is called a London force. Now, there are a few points about London forces that you need to remember. London forces are weak and easily broken. And remember that all intermolecular forces are much weaker than covalent bonds. Secondly, London forces are caused by random electron movement. So that means that every single atom or molecule will experience London forces, even if they experience other intermolecular forces as well. The strength of the London forces depends on the number of electrons. I'm showing you here the boiling point of the noble gases. As you can see, atoms with a greater number of electrons have got a higher boiling point, and that's because they experience stronger London forces. We can see the same effect with hydrocarbons. I'm showing you here the boiling point of the first five alkanes. Again, as the number of electrons increases, the boiling point increases. And again, that's because the strength of the London forces increases as the number of electrons increases. In the next video, we look at permanent dipole-dipole interactions. <laughs>